Hi guys and welcome to this week's vlog. I'm reviewing 10 slot filters, an expensive one, a not too expensive one, and a dirt cheap one. Surely this can't be any good, can it? So let's briefly look at the three 10 stop filters that we have on offer. Well, I'm sure most of you out there, certainly if you're serious about your landscape photography, will know the Lee brand. That's the Lee 10 stop filter. It costs around about hundred pound. I'm gonna compare that against this nice piece of glass by a company called Zomi. Never heard of them before, but that costs around about 50 pounds. So this, half the price, as the Lee 10 stop filter. And the next one on offer is this budget range 10 stop filter that surely is rubbish, isn't it? That costs around about 10 pound. Now, how did they get on? Let me very briefly talk to you about the testing conditions that I'm using, because this is very, very important. Um, and the reason why I'm saying that is because I'm going to run what I would consider to be a real world test on these, a test on these that anybody would do if they bought one. And I'm not going to do a scientific test on them. I'm not interested in a scientific test. Now there's a massive difference, they're a world apart between a scientific test and a real world test. So let me very briefly explain. If I was going to do a scientific test on this, the first thing I would do, I'd grab my gray card, I would take a white balance, grab a custom white balance setting for my camera, my camera would be set to manual, and therefore I would be guaranteed the exact same lighting results throughout the frame on all three images that I would shoot using these filters but that's not what you would do in the real world in the real world what you would do if i bought this first and foremost i'd have nothing to compare it to if i bought this likewise i'm only buying this i'm having nothing to compare it to so you don't know what's good and what's bad so where the real world test comes in is simply this i would get the correct settings in my camera I would throw this on the front of my camera, I'd grab a really nice image, I'd look at the picture, and I'd think, yeah, that's quite nice. This particular um, 10 stop filter, which is the Lee one, tends to offer a slight blue hue. If it's got a slight blue hue, then in my post-processing software, I would go to my white balance tool, uh, and I would then fix that slight blue hue if I wanted to. That's what I would do. I would make sure this is working correctly, which obviously it will be doing, I look at my picture, it's got a slight blue hue to it. If it had a yellow or a green hue, it makes the difference. If I can click a button to correct it and have the image look like it did when I was there taking the picture, then that is job done. So I'm not interested if any of these offer any hues whatsoever. And the reason why I'm saying that, because this is the most expensive one, the Lee 10 Stoppo, which costs hundred pound. And this will offer me a slight blue hue. You'll know that if you already own one of these and you're serious about your photography. None of us care about it. We don't, because we know straight away in my post-production software, click of a button and I'm gonna fix my white balance. So if I can do that with this, then why not do it with that? And why not do it with the budget range? That's all I'm interested in. There's, there won't be a comparison between them. If you bought one of these, you'd spend a tenner on it, you'd look at the results, looks okay, can I make it look nicer? Can I get the white balance right? Can I get my brightness levels right? Will it detract or deteriorate the quality of the image by doing that? If it's a slight tweak, then the answer is no, job done. That's it, that's the testing conditions. And that is much more important to me than any scientific test. Okay, so let's take a look at our images. Now I'm gonna be um, loading my images into ACR, which is the pre-Photoshop screen, but it didn't really matter. Everything, I'm only gonna to be touching a couple of sliders 
uh, with regards to um, um, tweaking the image ever so slightly. Of course, the white balance will be tweaked as well, but you can do that in any software, including Lightroom and anything. So um, it's not a Photoshop lesson, so don't worry about that. Okay, so let's take a look at these three images here now then. I'm now looking at these images in Bridge. These are the three images that I've captured. Now, I'm not gonna make a comparison between them both, and just for uh, your own peace of mind, these were all shot pretty much at exactly the same time during the day. The light may have changed ever so slightly because with me messing around and doing bits to camera, I took all three images within the hour, but the light didn't change to my eyes anyway much at all. So these three images should, in theory, be exactly the same. But remember, we're not doing a scientific test on these. We're doing a real world test. So let's have a quick look at these. Let's throw these into Photoshop. This will now open up into our pre-ACR screen. And the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click on the middle one here. This one here is the first shot that I took, and this is the one I took with my lead 10 stop filter. Don't need to dither around with this too much because I know that this is brilliant because this is the one I own. But very quickly, let's have a quick look. I'm gonna come up to here. I'm gonna click on remove chromatic aberrations and my lens profile corrector. That's gonna be the very first thing that I'm going to change. Now, as you'll see at the moment, Everything on the right hand side, they're all set to zero. Everything down here is all set to zero. So there's no improvements being made to this image at this present moment in time. So you can see clearly the image was shot perfectly. Um, I'm not sure if I've mentioned it by the way, but the settings were a two minute exposure at ISO 100 and um, F11. So F11 ISO 100 with a two minute exposure, all three images were shot using exactly the same settings. Auto white balance was selected. That's the important key here because that's more than likely what your white balance will be set at. So let's have a look at my Lee image now then, or my image that was shot with my Lee filter. Uh, straight off the bat, I think it looks fantastic. What I might do is put a slight, if I look up here as well, the histogram looks okay. Um, um, I'm going to say a nice range of colors, but of course it's quite bland, but it didn't really matter. The most important thing is there's no peak into the right, no peak into the left. So all I'm going to do now, I'm going to push my white slider up a bit, push my black slider down. Okay? That's going to give my image um, a bit more of a punchy look, not too much. And then I'm going to push my clarity slider at around about 10 or 15. So let's do 15 at this present moment in time. Remember, I'm not making a comparison between the others. I'm just getting this one so it looks right for me. That one there is absolutely spot on. And let me give you a, um, a hint here. Up the top left hand side here, this is my white balance tool. If I click on it, now the idea is now that if I can select gray, white or black in the image, then it will make a suggestion to me that this is the correct white balance. So it's a good test for you. I'm gonna choose this area here that area there on top of the shell, roughly there. If I click that, because that looks gray to me, that's gonna give me a white balance that Photoshop thinks is correct. And I think that's quite nice as well. I'm gonna add just a very slight blue hue to it. Very slight blue tint, there you go. I'm happy with that, job done. I'm happy with that. I'm not comparing this to anything, so that gets full marks for me, 10 out of 10 every time. Now I'm gonna move on to my Zomi filter. This is my Zomi filter. It's a nice piece of glass and it costs 50 pound. It's identical in looks to the Lee 10 stop filter and it works obviously using the same holder system as well. Um, it doesn't have a seal around it like the, the Lee 10 stop filter does. And if you look at the glass ever so slightly, it seems to have a white hue on one side and a very slight blue hue on the other side. Again, I'm really not interested. It's a good quality feel to that glass. It's also important to point out, and this is important to point out, maybe I should have said it at the beginning of the video, that this isn't sponsored in any way. I'm not being sponsored to try and push a 10 pound filter or a 50 pound filter. I swear I aren't. This is just mine. And it just so happens I broke one of these last week. I'll show you my broken one. I broke one of these before Christmas, actually. And I borrowed this and borrowed this off my mate, Tony. Tony's such a tight, a proverbial. 
he actually lent me this. This is how this whole thing has come about, by the way. So it's not a paid for, sponsored uh, ad or anything. Um, okay, so this one is £50. This is the Zomi one. If I look at this one now, remember, it's important not to compare them. I'm going to click on this one here and look at my image because this is the only filter that you're likely to own if you're going to fork out £50 for it. Okay, let's grab my white balance tool. Let's click on roughly the same place. If I click on that there, that's going to give me the same white balance pretty much as my Lee filter. Now I'm going to push the whites ever so slightly. I'm going to push this, the blacks ever so slightly. And I'm going to push a little bit of an exposure there. And that picture there, to me, looks tremendous. I don't even need to push the exposure. Histogram looks good. It's, it's full marks for me. That one there is absolutely fantastic. This is performing in exactly the same way as my Lee 10 stop filter is. It really is. Whilst I'm doing this, I'm looking at, at the area um, from back to front, all across the image. You understand what I'm saying? Just to make sure there's consistency throughout with the lighting. There's no shadowy lines there. Everything is perfect. I am very, very, very happy with the results of that very happy so if i bought that and i had nothing to compare it to i would think that that would be 50 pound well spent okay now let's talk about this one this is quite literally a piece of plastic and it cost 10 pound um, it looks good quality wise it's very difficult to tell whether it's plastic or glass it's uh well it just feels it feels like a good piece of kit but the proof is in the pudding. Remember, don't compare it because I know you can see, if you look on the left hand side there, you can clearly see there's a difference in lighting. We're not interested in that because if you bought this, you'd want to see what it was like. White balance tool, let's click on the same place. Now we've got pretty much the same white balance. Now I'm going to come up, it's clearly a little bit darker. You can see the histogram slightly to the left. Remember, I've got nothing to compare it to in theory. I'm going to grab my exposure tool. I'm going to move it to the right. Now I've moved it to just slightly over a stop. Now I'm going to grab my white, push my whites a bit more, and I'm going to push my blacks just to make it slightly punchier, give it that more contrasty feel. And there you go. The lighting is consistent throughout the whole of the image I'm looking now, and it looks perfect. It doesn't look any different from the other two. Now I've post-processed the work, all I'm going to do now is make a comparison between the three of them and they all look pretty much identical. The only slight issue you've got is this particular one is taking a picture slightly darker than the other two, which means this is probably operating more like an 11 stop filter than it is a 10 stop filter. But once again, if you bought that and you knew that you were taking a picture with this and your images are always slightly too dark, then the chances are you're going to shoot with an extra stop of light. And what that means is if you're shooting with a 30 second exposure, then that 30 second exposure will be a minute exposure just to give it an extra stop of light, which would equate to exactly what I've just done there in Photoshop by adding a stop of light in post. Um, would it de de deteriorate the image? <laughs> negligible, absolutely negligible. So there you go. I'm loving that. Now let me just, just do one final test. And the one final test is because we're shooting through glass or plastic. I just want to zoom in to each of these images just to make sure that the quality hasn't deteriorated. Okay, it's not a bit wishy-washy or a bit smudgy. Glasses back on. Okay, so let's have a quick look. Let's zoom in to 100%. This is the first image. Um, remember, you're looking at this probably low res, so it's not going to look as good to you as it will do for me. But this at the moment is my Lee 10 stop filter. Um, that looks absolutely perfect, as I imagine it to be, because I always use it. Move it across, everything looks fine. Yes, it's showing me that I've got a dirty sensor, but hey ho, that's what always happens. Next, let's move down to my Zomi one, which is the 50 pound one. There or thereabouts. Let's uh, zoom in 100%. Uh, let's do the same thing. I'm more interested. The eye will be drawn to Mary's shell. 
so I want to make sure that the Mary shell detail is perfect and let's make a comparison that there Wiggle zooms in that there Wiggle renders in I mean sorry okay that there might be a slight they're perfect that might be a slight difference with uh, the white balance but I'm going to tweak that white balance until I get it right for me um, but with a very quick edit that looks fantastic um, no issue with that at all I've obviously checked these beforehand anyway so I know that looking throughout the frame there's no issues in the corners there's no vignetting and so on and now let's look at the 10 pound one let's zoom in to 100 percent 100 percent we're back on there that should there you go um and again i only want to make sure because we're shooting through glass or shooting through plastic it's not a bit wishy-washy um, and that there let's make a comparison between the 10 pound one and direct to the lee 10 stop filter okay okay right well there you have it now in conclusion let's just very quickly make a conclusion here this is my lee 10 stop filter and i would not be without my lee 10 stop filter i love and adore it uh, like i say i did break one before christmas and i instantly then rushed out and bought another one it cost me around about a hundred pound so that's for me every time having said that i'm comparing it against this company i've never heard of called zomi um, and i'm making a comparison and it's absolutely identical identical so if you want to save 50 pound then buy one of these i'll leave the links by the way below this 10 pound one apart from it shooting slightly too dark you've got to buy this filter i suppose i'm not you know if you're a professional if money's no object you're going to buy one of these two without question you are but if you want to dip your toe into long exposure photography you know you don't need to spend 100 pound or 50 pound try it with this 10 pound filter i promise you you i promise you as long as you can post process your work slightly you won't be disappointed it's brilliant it really really is good and i i want to sit here and throw this against the wall and be frustrated by it and show you how rubbish japanese or chinese technology is but i can't because you can see the results for yourself apart from being slightly too dark a slight tweak and it's as good as the others it's brilliant now there's one slight downside to this particular one these two here will work with the standard lee 100 mil um, front end slot in system this one here is a screw on this is probably a, one of the reasons why it's so cheap positives and negatives with a screw on filter well they're a fuff as a negative as a positive you get no leak li uh, no light leaking in so there are some positives with it so that's not too bad um, the other negative thing with this as well is if i screw this into the front of my lens there isn't um, a way of me attaching my lee filter system to the front of this so this screw on filter won't work with my lee filter system so if you currently have a lee filter system or one that's like it just for your neutral density filters for instance then you this won't work in conjunction with it um, but you know hey ho that's for you to decide whether you want to buy it or not my conclusion is simply this these two are identical you've seen that for yourself this one will shoot slightly darker but the images are absolutely brilliant as long as you can put up with the screw in filter that's it it's as simple as that you decide